You're watching Newsday here on the Horizon News Channel. Across the African continent, inspiring young African entrepreneurs are changing the narrative of entrepreneurship on the continent. Over the last 10 years, Anzisha has championed the belief that young people should pursue entrepreneurship and become job generative entrepreneurs. After decades of support in the belief, Anzisha is excited to share with you the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame showcases 10 African entrepreneurs each year who started their ventures before the age of 25 and are now older and continue to thrive in their businesses. Their stories indicate successfully transitioning from school or university directly to entrepreneurship could immensely contribute to a prosperous economy in Africa. Now let's talk to one of the Hall of Famers, Ad Untuko Chesi. And Utuko Ishezi is an electromagnetic engineer and former strategy consultant at Essential. He's an expert in business strategy, business planning, and business model generation. Born into the Rua Ndwedwe, KwaZulu Natal, he blazed the trail to become the first in his family tree to graduate at a university, and he has also always been an entrepreneur, seeking solutions to solve everyday problems. In his lifetime, he has started failed and succeeded in at least 14 business ventures. He joins us right from South Africa right now. It's good to have you on board and congratulations on what you have done so far and your journey. And but give us a brief introspect into how is it like running a business on the African continent? Thank you and uh, good afternoon to all your viewers. Um, I think there's, there's no better place to be uh, for, for business than in Africa. So um, uh, my, my company is called Livestock Wealth. Uh, we pioneered a concept of crowd farming, which allows anyone who lives in the city to own uh, assets that are growing in a farm. It could be cattle, could be trees and other assets. It's exciting. What's exciting about that is that uh, we, we, we have real solutions, you know, for real problems that solve everyday problems. That's the beauty of running a business in Africa. Whereas in other countries, uh, America, uh, they've got businesses that solve like imaginary problems. Uh, but here we, we're dealing with bread and butter issues and it is, it's, it's the most exciting part. Certainly, Antutuko, it is. And I mean, in Africa, there are just so many institutional voids that we can see. And if you do have that idea, you can go out there and fill it. So once again, congratulations on making the Hall of Fame list. I want to know more about what it means to you to have made this list and more about your 14 business ventures that you have also had before your latest venture, Livestock Wealth, and the fact that you just kept going and going and going. Tell us more. Yes, yeah, so... Uh, so I started very early when I was six years old. My mom had already uh, uh, put me into business in terms of selling whatever she was selling in in her in her, in her high school. She was a teacher, so she would always give me some items for me to sell as well in my school. So and I would always get pocket money in that way. Uh, but then from there, then I, then I went to study at University of Cape Town, graduated, and went to work for Accenture as a strategy consultant. Uh, but then in between there, I've, I've always been doing businesses like your, your arcade video games, um, your arcade video games that the, that the, the students play in, in university. Uh, I've, I've imported, and I still have the license for, for importing uh, the American brand of condoms called Trojan into Southern Africa. So I've, I've, I've also done that. I've done a lot of crazy things. You know, it's, it's, it's been fun, you know, just uh, uh, trying out ideas seeing them succeed. Uh, and, and I think what, what's, what's beautiful is that all of these uh, businesses have given me all this experience across industries from retail, distribution, uh, warehousing. And, it, and it's, it's things that I'm applying in great detail now in my current business. All right. Um, when you talk to entrepreneurs here in the continent of Africa, a lot of them will tell you one of the barriers to success is funding. For you, what is the biggest barrier to success? Or is this funding, like I've just alluded to? No, no, no. Funding, funding is, is funding. An, an, an entrepreneur who complains about funding uh, must go back to school. Um, what, what, what's important really is finding a paying customer. Uh, that's, that's always what I always uh, want to do. You know? So once you find a paying customer, 
uh, half your problems are gone. And then you're then supposed to then just take that small amount of cash, reinvest in the business. So uh, I think is is that access to market in terms of finding a paying customer more more so than more more than access it's more finding what do people really want that product market fit is the most important thing that an, an entrepreneur can can discover in their business. Those are very key qualities that you have just pointed out in terms of what an entrepreneur should really have. And it leads me to speak to you or to want to speak to you rather about that transition because you started at six years old. Would you say that more young people today on the African continent are deviating from traditional careers and deviating from maybe even going into higher learning and focusing more on just pushing entrepreneurship? Would you say that that is a trend that we are seeing on the continent? I, I think... Uh I think Nigeria is, is ahead of South Africa in terms of that trend of pe where people are not looking to be employed. Uh, where we, we have a lot of unemployed graduates in South Africa where people go to school and then they, 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 then they go on the street and they march for jobs, almost demanding that someone creates employment for them, which is, uh, which is not the way I think uh, people should live their lives, in that everyone has got two hands, two feet, and a brain. And, and, and with, with armed with those, you should be able to use those uh, to create uh, money for your own self and your own family. And I'm seeing a lot more and more of people uh, really realizing that the, the, the corporate uh, story has been oversold. You know, people now are being retrenched in mass. Uh, and, uh, and after having worked for a company for 20 years, and then you are retrenched and you've got nothing uh, to show for it except for a very small pension fund. You know, so so I'm I'm loving the trend of of of, of Africans really uh, realizing that uh, they've got everything that they need in their hands to be able to 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 make a success of of business, whether large or small. All right, so talk to us. Um, COVID nineteen has ravaged the continent of Africa like it has for the rest of the world. How has it changed the way businesses are done in Africa? Talk to us about how COVID-19 has changed how businesses are done in Africa. Mm. I think, I think I've, I've always said I've, 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 I've enjoyed to see uh, how COVID-19 has, COVID has come to change things around. You know, people are always saying, uh, if you invest in property, you can't go wrong but we're seeing the property market being ravaged uh, where people are unable to pay rent, where companies who used to be uh, in the malls can't, can't, can't sell or trade anymore. So, so I'm, I'm loving how COVID-19 is actually leveling the playing field in the business sense, in terms of dissemin disseminating with all the established all boys clubs and rules in terms of, how, of what's supposed to work and what's not supposed to work in business. But what, what, it, what it requires is entrepreneurs with an eye to at be this able point, to see opportunity. I will have to thank you and say congratulations once again on making the Anzisha Hall of Fame. And all the best with your business ventures. Thanks for joining us on Newsday. Mm -hmm.